believe that finance and PDO can play a much bigger role than it has done in the past. What do I mean by that really? I suppose it's, you know, for most people they think of PDO as a technical company and finance provides a service, the transactions, it does the end of the year, bookings, it produces the capital budget books, etc. But I've always felt, and over the years, when it's been most successful is when it does more than that. That's, I think that's what you're calling business partnering. Um, so what, what, do we, what do I mean by business partnering? Well, it's indeed when finance is at the heart of what we do. Um, being at the table, challenging the assumptions we make. I think that's one key area that I really look forward to and enjoyed in my past uh, business partners, that they were always on the leadership team and were encouraged indeed to, to be fully members of that leadership team and, um, and I think they added a valuable contribution because often they asked the questions that we assumed. And I think there's potential for finance to do even more than that. And the example I give really is um, what finance has done in the last two or three years by almost single-handedly leading the assets on the operating cost initiative. Indeed, the need came from finance. It came that, that operating costs were, were no longer in a situation that we could explain adequately to our shareholders. Um, so they, they created the need. We, we uh, then created that uh, committee that we call the Operating Improvement Committee. But if I think over the years of uh, the success of that work, it really has been driven by finance, not just doing the number crunching, but the real challenge, they actually did the analysis, they did the explaining, they gave us the ahas of where to go forward, so that's, that's business partnering. For me at this juncture, it's important to take a step back just to put our vision into context. And the finance directorate vision, so to speak, is about being world-class by 2020. It is about anticipating business needs. It's about adding value. It is about working collaboratively, as well as incorporating an external perspective. And in order to get to this 2020 vision, it is fundamental for us to have effective business partnering. And I try to reflect in terms of what does business partnering mean to me. And for me, it's really about transitioning the finance directorate from the more archetypal sort of challenge and support, and then it stops there, to a more you know, commercial partner of the business. Really, it's about the finance directorate as a whole, capitalizing on the synergies that we have to ensure that we position ourselves in such a way, so much so that the business seeks us out for our value, for our input, for our advice. That's what business partnering means to me. As advice um, on how you proceed with this, I think uh, certainly educating uh, the, and I think you've, you've started doing this, educating the finance community that their role is beyond transactions, sure. beyond providing services, is the first step. Um, I, th I think you, you will need to be. That not everybody's going. Not, not, I think you have to realise not everybody's going to enjoy Absolutely. this uh, sure. uh, new world. The, the people are going to be comfortable in in the work they do. So I think being selective about who you uh, put into those interface positions so that it's actually the people who are going to enjoy it and you're actually going to uh, make the best of it. It's interesting you should mention that Amran because recently we've also done a business partnering survey and this is a survey that went out to about a hundred people within the finance directorate who did respond as well as a significant number of people within the technical functions including the MDC members who have also responded and when they were asked what do you see as the challenges that might prohibit the finance directorate from effective business partnering? Some of the things that came up included um, the time that it will take the finance directorate to partner, 
The second thing that came up was the resourcing levels that we currently have within our organization. The third thing that came up was the organizational setup at the moment, because there's quite a degree of overlap. The fourth thing that had come up was in terms of clarity of the role. And the fifth was business understanding or lack thereof. So they saw these five as the key challenges or bottlenecks into moving forwards in this journey. And, and I was reflecting on this as well because um, they seem to be setbacks, but setbacks that can be um, addressed or, or tackled by the program that we're, we're launching. But equally, I thought there was an angle that hadn't been covered, and, and you sort of alluded to it at the moment, and that is this mental prison that we have within the finance directorate, because indeed, as you correctly point out, it is moving away from our comfort zone. Looking at financials and doing the financial analysis and doing the fairness explanations, that's our bread and butter. It's our basics. That's something that we've been um, brought up with. We're comfortable with that. But it now takes the business to move into a different dimension altogether. And it can be quite intimidating if staff aren't provided with the right tools in order to build the confidence, if they're not enabled with the right, I suppose, business know-how, and so on and so forth. You've got role models already. The, 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 the people at, at the tables already are role models who are doing a great job. Yes. And I think you need uh, to encourage them to to be the, the ambassadors uh, of finance um, from the positions they're in. And I think if, if there's uh, one piece of advice I can give you as you take your journey forward, it really goes, it really goes back that this is not going to be easy. And you're talking about a company that's got a history of 40 years of technical dominance. And you're going to need to. You're going to need to encourage. Um, and, uh, the word aggressiveness is wrong, but I think I, what I like is it, it, to picture in my mind as somebody who's willing to elbow Assertive themselves system. into into things. Because as I, as I said, the, the finance group are a great resource that are underutilized. Particularly when I think of uh, as an asset director, you want to do some business improvement. Traditionally, what you'll first do is you look to one of your technical staff and say, look, can you do this? And actually, there's a, there's a great resource sitting there who can probably give it a much better shot because business improvement often requires, in the first instance, to throw away everything you know. My advice to my own directorate would be to try and break away from that mental prison. So you talk about assertiveness, and, I, and I'm talking about break away from the mental prison to be able to have the confidence enough to be assertive, to push boundaries, to move out of the comfort zone, um, to engage with the business and, and have a, a two-way dialogue, um, and to try as much as possible to understand the business such that we can indeed anticipate business needs and be there to provide um, proactive advice.